Hey, my name is Mike. I'm an AI enablement engineer here at Batovi. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how we can integrate Windsurf's Cascade AI agent with apps like Figma and Jira in order to have it complete an entire Jira ticket from scratch in one shot. The first thing I want to do is show you the app that we're going to be implementing the feature on. This is an app called Taskflow. It just allows us to keep track of simple tasks. You can see there's an area down here for like a Kanban board, for Teams, and then also for analytics. Now let's take a look at the feature that we want to implement inside of Taskflow. It's called Add a User Details page. We're going to add a page where the user can save their first and last name in a form. We even have some Figma links here that show us what it should look like. So what Cascade is going to be able to do is look through all of these different files, like these different Figma files, and then also look through that Jira ticket, and it'll be able to implement the feature for us from scratch. So you can see here, there's a bunch of different states, and all of those should be represented in the final app. Now, one of the things we've been doing at Batovi is working on these magic prompts. Now, I have one of these magic prompts right here. It's basically two lines, and it links us out to a repository that has a bunch of information and context that Cascade's going to use in order to implement this feature. So all I have to do is take these two lines, I can paste them here into Cascade, and then I just need to put the ticket number, which in this case is going to be user 12. So that's the ticket number of that Jira issue that we just looked at. Now I can hit enter and Cascade is going to go off and complete and integrate this entire issue for us into our code base. So you can see here that Cascade's already started to make a plan for how it's going to tackle this problem. Now it's going out to Jira and getting the Jira issue. And you can see all of this communication is happening through JSON. We're actually going to talk a little bit more about how this communication takes place once the feature has been implemented. You can see here Cascade's gone out to Figma and it's gotten all of the different designs that we specified in that file. So all those different designs will be able to get the code back from them, like the actual HTML and CSS, and Cascade will use that in order to implement them in the feature. Here it's getting more of that Figma stuff. It's actually able to get the images from that file. Now it's searching the file system to find out what files it needs to modify and what files it needs to add in. You can see here it's modifying the sidebar, the page, and then also creating a new user details form.tsx file. Looks like Cascade just finished up. It added a few files to our code base. Now I'm going to head back over to this Taskflow app and see if the feature was implemented correctly. You can see over here we have the user details section right there. That's a good sign. Here we have our form. I'm just going to put my name in and then hit submit submitting and then thank you for submitting all right so that looks exactly like we specified up here in this figma document so it looks like cascade was able to successfully implement that feature in our code base in just about two minutes now that we've got the feature implemented correctly i want to talk a little bit about how this all works behind the scenes because there are a few different ways that we need to configure windsurf and cascade in order for this all to work correctly the first thing I want to show you is my instructions file. So I have a folder over here called windsurf and then inside another folder called rules. So in this rules folder, you can put any files that you want Cascade to use as context when it's executing and running its operations. So in this case, I put this instructions.md file and what it does is it outlines all the different parts of my code base. So you can see I've outlined like how the technology stack works, how the files are organized, the architecture, even build instructions. So what this does is it provides good context for Cascade so that when it's trying to implement code in my code base, it kind of knows how it should integrate things in correctly. This is a really important file. And actually at Batovi, we've come up with another one of those magic prompts, which allows the AI to generate this file for you. So the AI will actually like go through your entire file system and generate one of these instructions files. I'll put a link to that in the description below. The next thing we need to talk about is how Cascade is able to talk to services like Jira and Figma, because you saw before how Cascade was able to go out and like get images of all that Jira stuff or all the Figma stuff, and then how it was also able to read through and actually like parse the entire Jira issue. So the way we do this is using something called the model context protocol or MCP. And MCP allows things like Cascade, these AI agents, in order to communicate with services like Jira or Figma or really any other service that implements this MCP protocol. 
So Cascade is able to kind of use services from Jira or Figma, like being able to get the image of a design or being able to like read through an issue. It can do that using MCP. It can actually like ask these services for those different resources. So the way that we set those up in Cascade is you come up here to the top right, there's a section for MCP servers. And then there's gonna be a full listing of all these servers that are like popular and supported in Cascade. So the first one I'll set up is Figma. So I'm just gonna hit Figma right here. You should be able to install it. Now with Figma, you're gonna to need to have a couple of other things set up as well. First thing is you're gonna to need to have the Figma app open and you're gonna to need to have dev mode enabled. So over here, I have the Figma app open. I have dev mode enabled. And then you wanna come over here to this little F, come down to preferences and then hit enable dev mode MCP server. You're also gonna to need to have all of the files that you want Cascade to be able to read through open in an active tab on the app. So that's really important. Figma is gonna be running locally, so you're gonna to have to have all that set up. Next, we'll install the Atlassian server. So that one's just down here. Once again, you're gonna hit install. You're gonna to have to probably authenticate with Atlassian, so you'll be able to authenticate, and then Cascade's gonna have access to all of your Jira tickets. So you'll be able to read through them and then obviously implement them like we saw before. Now, the final thing I wanna show you is that magic prompt. So up here, I'm in this repository called AI Enablement Prompts. This is something that we've been working really hard on at Batovi. And there's a section down here called Writing Code Generate Feature. And then down here, we have this generatefeature.md file. This is what Cascade was actually reading through earlier. And you can see it's just for implementing end-to-end -end Jira ticket automation. So we retrieve the ticket number, we parse the ticket content, gather supplementary information, synthesize, and then implement the ticket logic. So this prompt has been worked out and tweaked so that it allows the AI to be able to complete those issues really easily in about two minutes, like I said. What we've done then is we've compiled and sort of compressed that into this two line prompt where we just tell the AI to go out to this repo and then read that file. And then all I have to do is put in the ticket number as a parameter and everything works perfectly. So that's going to do it for me. If you'd like to learn more about how all this works and integrate it into your own workflows, feel free to reach out to Batovi. We're always looking to upskill teams on this stuff. But otherwise, keep innovating.